Uh, all right, so fellas, this one's a transaction analysis table. Um, now I'm going to try to move through this one pretty quickly, but there is quite a bit of work, so it might take a little while. Now, important thing to note here, a transaction analysis table, um, a real life accountant is never going to create one. A transaction analysis table is designed as a learning tool. It's something that you see in accounting textbooks and it's designed to make sure that you guys are across all of this stuff. Um, but that said, it is very close to something called a general ledger uh, and it is very close to uh, columnar ledgers as well. So if you can do this, it's a very short jump to doing what actual real accountants do. All right, so uh, let's jump into it. We're going to do some transactions uh, of a business, a lawn mowing business. Now, I'll just show you this here. So on the 1st of July, Michael begins his business uh, mixed mowing service by depositing $5,000 cash into a bank account in the name of the business. All right, so let's take a look at that. So it was the 1st of July that this happened. And then in the transaction bit, just try to be a bit descriptive. So starts business, uh, deposits 5,000. Okay, so now this is where the real accounting stuff happens. You've got to think about what accounts were involved in this. Now, there's always a minimum of two accounts involved in any transaction. Now, first of all, he took $5,000 of his own money and he put it into the business's bank account. So one thing that ha is going to happen is the cash at bank account. Okay, The business's cash at bank is going to go up. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is that $5,000 represents mixed capital in the business. So the other thing that's going to happen is the capital is going to go up. Okay, so two accounts involved, cash at bank and capital. Now, is cash at bank going up or is it going down? This is our up or down column. Obviously, real accountants don't have an up or down column. It's a bit, this is the learning bit. Okay, so cash at bank is going up because the business is putting more money into its, um, into its bank account. Now, capital, which is, remember, capital is the owner's stake in the business. Capital also went up. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that in any transaction there has to be an up and a down. Sometimes two accounts will go up, and you'll see why in a minute. Now, account type. What sort of account is it? Have a think about that one. What sort of account is a cash at bank? Is it um, an asset, a liability, or an owner's equity? Cash at bank, it's an asset. You guys are all pretty good at that. And capital, it's the owner's stake in the business, it's an owner's equity. You can just write A and OE there if you want to. What are the nature of those? Now you guys should be across that by now. You know that an asset is a debit and an owner's equity is a credit. And then this is the thinking part, this is the real accounting part. A debit has gone up. So if a debit has gone up, you have to debit it. You have to debit it by $5,000. And if a credit has gone up, you have to credit it by $5,000. Okay, there's our first transaction. You're going to take your rule, you're going to rule it off. I'm going to do three more transactions um, much, much faster than I've done that one. Okay, so quickly, we're looking at transaction two. On the 2nd of July, Mixed Mowing Service organises a loan of $20,000 from AMU Bank. So they're going to get a loan. Okay, so it's happening on the 2nd of July. Get loan of $20,000. Okay, and again, we need to think about the accounts involved when you get a loan. Now, when you borrow money from a bank, your cash at bank is going to go up. Yesterday you had $5,000, now you've been lent $20,000. So cash at bank is one. Now, the other one is going to be a loan, a loan account. And that loan is from, I think it was from ABC Bank. Let's have a look. AMU Bank, sorry. Okay, uh, moving along here. Now, the cash at bank has gone up. And the loan, the value of the loan has gone up as well. You didn't have any loan today, now you have a $20,000 loan. Account types. Cash at bank, we already know that. It's an asset. Loan, that's a liability. You owe someone some money. 
Now we know that assets are debits. And we know that liabilities are credits. And looking here, again, both accounts are going up. So if a debit account goes up, you have to debit it. And this time it's $20,000. And if a credit account is going up, you need to credit it. Okay, so both instances so far, um, everything's going up. So you debit your debit account, you credit your credit accounts. Uh, obviously, it's going to change a little bit in the next two, hopefully. So here's our third transaction here. Um, mix mowing service pays cash for some equipment purchased for the business. The total value of the equipment is $2,000. So he buys some lawn mowers, some whippers, snippers, whatever. Okay, let's take a look. So make sure you rule it off. And moving on from there, it's the 3rd of July now. Buys equipment for $2,000. And what accounts are involved here? Now, if you have to buy something, obviously you have to pay something. So you, something's going to happen to your cash at bank. Now, you've seen I've written that on the second line. I'll explain why in a minute. The other thing that's going to happen is your amount of equipment is going to go up. He's only just started this business before he had no equipment. Now he's got some equipment. So his equipment's going to go up. Okay, what's going to happen? Equipment, I just said, the equipment's going to go up. We didn't have any equipment, now we have equipment. The cash at bank is going to go down because you've got to go and pay some money. Both of these things, equipment is an asset, and cash at bank is obviously an asset. We've done that two times already. Now, what's the nature of each of those accounts? Now, the nature of, of both of those, they're both debit accounts. Now, you're probably looking at this, if you've got some experience with accounting, you're probably looking at this going, wait a minute, we can't debit two things. You have to debit one thing and credit another thing. That's what these arrows are for. We're going to debit the equipment. That is our equipment, our asset is going to go up. We're going to debit that by $2,000. And then this, our cash at bank, it's a, assets are a debit account, but this is going down. So if a debit account goes down, we have to credit it. So that's $2,000. Now, you'll remember a minute ago I said, I'll explain to you why I wrote cash bank down at the bottom. Now, this is an accounting convention that a lot of you are already aware of. Debits should go first. Credits should go second. So that is, if you're going to debit something, you should put that one first and then you should credit the second. You get this nice little left to right, uh, up to down, drop diagonal thing going on. Okay, uh, that's three transactions. One more to go. I should be able to get out of this in under 10 minutes. So our fourth uh, transaction here is the most complicated one. Mixed mowing service purchases a second-hand trailer for the business valued at $2,500. Michael pays ABC Co. a deposit of $500 cash and enters into an agreement to pay the remainder of the debt at the end of the month. A mouthful there. Um, basically, he wants to buy something, so he pays him a deposit and he's going to pay the rest later, an account payable. Um, and you guys have dealt with accounts payable before. Let's take a look at what it would look like. It's happening on the 4th of July. And he buys a trailer. Uh, deposit. Well, he buys a trailer for 2500 Deposit 500 uh, Pay... Um, who was it? Who are we, who are we buying this off? Uh, ABC. Pay ABC $2,000 end of month. Try to be descriptive, but not too descriptive with your transactions. I probably could have gone a bit easy, a bit simpler there. Okay, so he buys a trailer for $2,500, deposit $500, and he owes ABC $2,000. So there's going to be three accounts here. Don't have to have just two, sometimes three or more are involved in a transaction. First thing, uh, our trailer account is going to go up. Our bank account is going to go down. And our accounts payable, careful here, our accounts payable are going to go up. Um, before we didn't have any accounts payable. Now we have $2,000 worth of accounts payable. So accounts payable are going up here. Now the trailer is an asset. 
a bank is an asset, accounts payable is a liability. So that's a debit, that's a debit, that's a credit. You can see I'm getting lazy here. D, D, C. Now this debit goes up. You've purchased a trailer. Oh. If you didn't rule off that line, you're a bad person. All right. A debit has gone up, $2,500. Uh, our asset, we deposited $500 from the bank. So the asset's gone down. So that's going to be a credit. We're going to credit our bank account, $500. And accounts payable, it's a liability going up. A liability going up or a credit going up. So we have to credit it. We have to credit $2,000. Okay, that's it. Uh, I said I'd get done 10, that's 11. Um, it's really important that you again understand that this is a transaction analysis table designed for you to really think about and learn accounting. Uh, take your time with this. This is the start of the year. If you get this under control, the next two years of accounting are going to be really, really simple for you. So make sure you practice, practice, practice this and talk to me as soon as you're unsure or as soon as your answers look different to the answers in the, uh, that I'll provide. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.